Good morning, New Walk Church. I want you guys to stand to your feet. As you're coming in, take some time to greet somebody, shake somebody's hand, tell them they matter. Tell them that there's a chili cook-off. There's all kinds of crazy stuff going on. We're going to worship God this morning. We invite you to come and praise Him with us.
praise God. We're going to continue to worship God and let the cry of our heart this morning be that we say yes to you, Lord. No matter what it is you ask, no matter what we have to sacrifice, God, we want you and we say yes. Come on. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things. Yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Just as we say, yes, I will to God, there's things we have to say no to. So this morning, we're going to say no to fear. We're going to say no to guilt. We're going to say no to regret. We're going to say no to those things. We're going to say no to slavery. 
because we are no longer slaves to our fear. We're no longer slaves to our shame. For those who know Jesus, there is freedom. together church I'm no
Lord, we thank you that we can come here together and praise you. God, we thank you that despite our imperfections and our flaws, our transitions, our trials, God, you still choose to say that we belong to you. Now, Lord, I pray as we continue into this time of worship, God, that you would bless Pastor Gary. God, you would give him words of wisdom, that you would speak through him. You would give him the words to say, Lord. You would say and do what you want, Lord. And I pray that you would soften hearts here. God, I pray your word would pierce the hardest hearts today because we know that it does. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. And we pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 All right, you guys can be seated. Welcome. Thanks for coming out again to the second week of our series. Good to see you here. Yeah, good to have you be a part of the Chili Cook-Off. You know you have an opportunity to vote. Some very important votes are being cast to see who the winners are. And the race is tight. I'm not kidding. The race is tight. And so uh, it'll be important. As you head out this afternoon, you'll have a chance to take part in that. And I hope you enjoy that. Uh, don't come back in the building after that. Oh, we don't want the aromas that come with all of that back in the building. So, no. Yeah. Uh, we are excited about that, but I'm also excited about the second week of our series. You know, actually in 2019, something that was really cool that happened at our church is like we grew a lot uh, as a church in just about every area of our church, about every single ministry. And then we kicked off this new year with this new series and we're like, man, what's God going to do? Are we going to grow? you know, this year as well. And I don't know if you know this, but last week alone, 146 first-time visitors came to this church. Just last week alone. <clears throat> you may not be aware, but in church culture in America today, this is sad, but uh, many churches go weeks without one new visitor coming. And here we had that many in one weekend. So very exciting times here being a part of our church. Some of you are visiting today for the very first time. You're what we call a VIP. We want to welcome you and say thanks for coming. I know it is not easy to try out a church and check it out for the first time. And I know that's kind of a big step. And you decided to do that as a thank you for doing that. We have a gift we want to get into your hands. And that gift is available at one of two places. You can pick it up. If you go do the, the chili tasting afterwards... There's a tent outside there with first-time visitor gifts under the blue awning outside the main entrance there of the parking lot. There's also a VIP area out there as well. We have a free gift to give you a shirt to get in your hands. Second-time visitors as well at either place. You're here visiting for the second time. We have free gifts for all of our second-time visitors as well. Our series, Game Over, has been about things that we can do, decisions, choices that we can make to maybe set forth on a new year, a new decade, whatever it is, a new life, new way of living, some decisions and choices that we could make that would be some of the healthiest uh, sort of game-changing decisions. We're saying game over to some old ways of living and embracing some new opportunities in front of us. And today, what I want to do is share with you a really a, a kind of centering my entire message around a very specific scripture, but it is one of the most powerful. If we were looking at really re recalibrating our life, this would be one of the most powerful scriptures you could pay attention to. It comes from the Ten Commandments. You know, you know the Ten Commandments. Like you, you, you may not have ever read the Bible in your life, but you've heard of the Ten Commandments. And the very first commandment is, well, it's not there by random accident. It's the first because it is the, it is the covering of all things when you get down to it. It says that you shall have no other gods, God says, you shall have no other gods before me. I'm going to unpack that here. Before I unpack that particular scripture and how that applies to this, this challenge that we're going through here in 2020, I want to say that maybe you don't know much about the Ten Commandments, and, and 
if you don't know much about it, maybe you're new to the faith or you, you, you don't, you're, you're not a believer, maybe you don't know much about the Bible, it is possible you could look at the Ten Commandments, any of them, through a really negative lens. You could be like, yeah, I know about the Ten Commandments. They kind of have a negativity to them because it's God's list of don't do this, don't do that. It's God's way of spoiling the fun for all of humanity by giving us this list of do's and don'ts. You know, like you could have some sort of negative vibe about this list of these commands that we look at. So I just want to say, anytime you look at the commandments, you need to have the right lens on when you, when you look at the Ten Commandments because they're not negative at all. It, like really, they're, they're not. You, you think about it when you consider uh, the Ten Commandments. What they actually are is statements from God saying, if you do this, okay, I'm going to set you up for something better in your life. In other words, as we read throughout the Bible, we see that this the spiritual laws that God gave us in the Ten Commandments, if we follow them, He begins, God begins to show us the promises for following these commands. So that though they are commands, they're not these killjoy things. They're actually that if you'll follow them, you're going to discover the greatest way of living you could live. And the fact is, is that you know deep down inside, like one of the commands is, thou shalt not steal. You didn't need me to tell you that your life will probably live better if you're not a thief. Like, you didn't need me to tell you that. You probably know that's probably true. One of them is, thou shalt not kill. And again, you didn't need me to tell you that your life will probably turn out better if you don't murder people. So when you look at the lens of a commandment, you're saying, God says, thou shalt don't do this, but it is because he wants you to discover better for your life. When I consider... Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God is saying that because that if you'll put God first, he has better things for you. Think about it in this realm, these commands. If you have children, if you tell your child, thou shalt not touch the hot stove, are you telling them, because you, telling them that because you want to steal the joy and the fun from their life? No. You're telling them because you know that there's something better for them by not touching the stove. Life will be better if you don't touch the stuff. If you tell your kids, thou shalt not run in the street without looking at the cars or the traffic first, if you tell them that, you're not telling them that to like steal the joy from their life. You're trying to keep them alive. You just have the best, you're, you're explaining a better way of living. That's what the commandments are for us. Like There is a promise with these that if we obey, if we pay attention and obey them in our lives, life is better. So anytime you hear one of these these laws, these spiritual laws that God has given us, we pay attention to them. Now, you could sit here in our time together and say, well, I know they're there, that sounds really nice, but I really don't believe that stuff, and that's fine. You can believe that these spiritual laws are not true. That does not change the fact that they are true. And I think you know deep down inside, I've given you some examples already as to why these really actually make sense. But in this world... God has given us physical laws. We call them the laws of physics. And then God has also given us spiritual laws. In the laws of physics that God has given us, one of those things is the law of gravity. Maybe you've heard of that. You know about the law of gravity, and you know it's a real thing. Like we all know, this is a law that God has given, and it's a real thing. And you could say you don't believe in the law of gravity, and you could go to the top of a 30-story building and jump off and say, I don't believe in the law of gravity. But you're going to quickly start falling, and maybe even on your way down you go, I still don't believe in the law of gravity. But there's going to come a time where the splat happens, and you're going to realize that the law of gravity actually exists. The same thing is true with these spiritual laws. You can sit here and tell me you don't think they're real, that's fine. And you can ignore them, and even on your way downhill in life, you can say, I don't believe those laws, but there comes a time when you hit rock bottom. And you begin to realize that, you know what, it turns out these spiritual laws are actually very true. So I'm setting a foundation for you that when I give you one of these spiritual principles like this, that there is a strength that God wants to give us that associates itself with these laws. It's 2020. This is that moment, you know, where we say, can we put some things behind us and look ahead? I go back to the Israelites. You know, they came out of 
the slavery in, in Egypt and now something new is before them. Hundreds of years of oppression and now they're out of it. Something new in front of them. Some of you, this is new year, you're, you've been a new believer in Christ. You've got something new in front of you. Some of you just recently made that decision. Others of you are trying to put some difficulties, maybe of the last year or some things in life behind you. Okay, like this comes alive for us in 2020 because God is saying, okay, Moses, now that you're in a new place, let me, let me help you out with some things. And here's what it says in Exodus 20 in verse 1. It says, and the Lord God spoke all these words. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. And then the very next thing, he's like, okay, you ready to go forward? Hey, you, you ready to, to do something new in life? Here we go. Here's what I want you to remember. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. It is not a random thing that this is number one. Because throughout the scriptures from the Old Testament, Jesus in the New Testament, this is confirmed over and over again. I'm going to unpack some of it with you that things go better in our life. They just absolutely do when we put God first in all areas of our lives. Maybe you come into this audience here today or you're watching online and you know what? You, you've got a, a mess of decisions you've made where God was not first in your life and you made some poor choices. Great news. This is why God gave his son Jesus Christ for us. That though we've made mistakes and not gotten this right, we can be forgiven and we can set out on a new path that says, God, I do want you to be first in my life. I put this in your notes. Our principle, this, this game over principle for us here today is this. We, we've got to come to a place where we want God to get the, be, be in first place in our life. God gets first place in my life. God is not looking for rivals. He can whip them, but he's not looking for them. He does not want to be second place, in other words. He, he's, he's not looking to be challenged for the top spot. God wants the top spot in all areas of your life. The scriptures say, thou shalt have no other gods. That's a reference to little g gods. That's what I call them, the lowercase g gods. These little fake idols that we let challenge God for first place, that we let get into our lives. The scriptures don't say, uh, thou shalt choose between having a God or not. That's not what it says. It says, it says, don't choose the little g gods because here's the thing. Everybody in this room has a God. That's why there's really no atheists. Because you, everybody worships something. You, know, you have something that, is a bit, that you've put all your marbles into. Like, this is everything for my life. And you worship that. You know, it could be a material possession like a car or a boat. Or, you know, it could be something you know, like substance, substances or substances that you use to, to make your life better and you're trusting in them and you're worship. It could be money that you trust in in all things and you worship that in your life. So we all worship something. It could be a guy. It could be a girl, man, woman, relationship, sex. It could be any of that stuff that is the big priority in our life. Thou shalt not have those rivals, those little g God's God says, I'm wanting big G God first, first place. In the end, this is about priorities. What is your highest priority? And I could go through this, and I think there's some people here who call themselves longtime believers, and they would say to me, well, I got this, so you know. I mean, God is first place in my life. But I want us to take it and unpack it and say, you know what? Is that really true? I'm not going to ask you to publicly stand up and say, yeah, uh, this is an area that I'm messing up. But in your time privately saying, God, I sense right now that though I say you're first place in my life, my actions and the way I'm living really don't bear that out if I'm really honest before you. Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. He didn't say you shouldn't serve two masters. He said it is impossible to serve to. It's either one or the other, but you, you can't serve both. So either God is first in your life or he is not. Now, many of you have chosen to put something first. You've all chosen to put something first place in your life, but I put this down in your notes. A key to freedom, a key to healthier living in your life is this. You've got to just choose the best master for your life. Everybody serves a master, You've got to decide, you, listen, you're going to put all your eggs in a basket, you better make sure you got the right one. 
Now, I feel like it would be helpful, I know this to be true, that if I'm going to serve a master, I want to serve a master that has my best interests at heart. I, I want to make sure that I serve a master that has my best interests at heart. Here's what I know. Alcohol don't have your best interest at heart. You know that. Substances don't have your best interest at heart. Pornography. Relationships. Right? I'm talking about like putting a relationship above, before God, uh, above God. These things, they don't have your best. You know that in the long run. There is only one thing that you could make your master that actually has your complete best interest at heart all the way through to eternity. And that is serving Jesus Christ. But until you figure that out, you could waste a lot of time of your life serving the wrong master. You need to make sure you choose the right master. And Matthew 6, Jesus confirms this. He says, yeah, you know what? This thing about serving God only comes with a promise. And he spells it out right here. Here's what he says. It says, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness and all, and I circled the word all, all these things will be given to you as well. Like in, in my notes, I just paid attention to that word, all. If you could have a 100% full coverage of everything in your life insurance plan, would you be interested in that? Like it covers everything. I'd say, okay, well, I'm, I'm interested in that for sure. This scripture talks about the 100% all coverage plan. That that coverage plan is through your heavenly father that if you will seek him first and he begins to do a work in your heart about what really matters most and your priorities and the biggest and most important things God's putting in your heart about your life, if you seek him first, he's working all those things uh, to bring them into right positioning in your life. This incredible coverage plan that God has to offer, Proverbs 3, 6, here's another promise about putting God first. God says, put me first. There's a promise in everything you do, put God first and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. Oh my goodness. If I came to you today and you just were in a location where we were gathered and I just said, hey, 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 maybe you say you didn't know it was church. You're at some other place and location. And I said to you, hey, do you want to know what will crown your efforts and make the most of all your efforts in life and bring you the most success in life? You'd say, yeah, I want to know what that is. And I would say to you, well, here it is right here. Put God first. If you'll do that, there's a promise, there's a richness for life that comes with that. I put in your notes, the promise is this, that when you get this right, God brings everything in your life into focus. He brings what matters most into focus. And then you're able to have success in life when you're bringing the attention of the life that you have onto the right things that really, really matters. He brings a clarity to life when you start putting him First, it begins to, to show you and direct your paths very specifically. Then I put this in your notes. So here's the procedure. Here's what we're going to do with this. What, what do you do with this? You, you, say, you say this. Any area that I want God to bless in my life, I'm going to get to work putting him first. Any area. Right now, you're saying, where do you want, where do you want, how do you want God to bless your life? Name an area and say, okay, I'm going to put God first. God, I'm, I'm going to put you first. Now, I'm not a smart guy. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I figured this out a while back, that it would be smart if I said, God, I want you to be first in all areas because I serve a powerful God. I serve a, a powerful God whose power is not known of anything here on this earth. And if I put him first and he puts his blessing on an area of my life, that that's going to be a great thing for me to have in my life. And so what I'd really challenge you to do is in all areas of your life, but maybe you're going to get specific in our time together. Maybe God's going to reveal some things. Get to work putting him first in that area of your life. I wrote in your notes, if you want to flip them over, we're going to restart, though, with some game-changing first. And I made this very wonderful acrostic. It's so nice. It spells out the letter firsts, plural. And uh, then I'm going to show you some areas that you can focus on for, for really healthy uh, recalibrating or new beginnings in your life. And the first one is finances. You're like, oh man, we got to talk about that first. Are you kidding me right now? Well, it starts with F, okay? It was the first letter of my, it fit beautifully in here in this position. So we're going to do this one. We're going to do this one first, but 
I, I do know that as I'm about to share about putting God first financially, there are some of you who go, man, I don't know if I really believe that. I mean, come on, this guy, what's he selling up there? You know, well, <laughs> okay. Uh, you're in a mess financially, living paycheck to paycheck, and you're in debt. And, or you can live your finances God's way. Now, you won't know what living God's finances looks like until you actually do it. So don't be trash-talking what I do, and I'm discovering financial freedom in my life, and you're living in a quagmire because you haven't put God first in your life. Don't knock it till you've done it. Then you might discover that this principle actually is a real principle for your life that can change the way you live financially. It starts with putting, putting God first. And some of you need to make this decision going forward in your life. Proverbs 3 and verse 9 says, it, it comes with a promise. Here it is. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with your first fruits of all your crops. So the portrait is with your income, you're giving the first to God. You're, you're, you're bringing the first to, to the things of the kingdom of God. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. There's an overflowing to your life that comes by putting God first financially. That's a nice promise. And that is not a promise that, hey, here come all the $100 bills your way. That's not what that is. The promise here is, remember, God brings your life into focus when you start putting Him first. And when you put Him first in your finances, He shows you right priorities in your life. He shows you the things that matter most. Uh, that happened for me when I started putting God first. He began to reveal things about my home and my family and investing in my children and what really mattered most for me in my life. And I didn't have to spend all of my life exhausting myself over finances as God began to reveal things differently. And I have an overflow happening in my life of blessings in all these other intangible ways in some ways because I've understood this particular principle in my life, these priorities getting in order. And you know what your priority is when it comes to your money. You know, I know, if I, I could tell you what your priorities. All I have to do is roll out the transactions that you had the last month in your financial life, and I would see exactly what your priorities are, and you would as well. So this is not anything that's like secret, like you know whether God is first in your finances or not. In Deuteronomy, it says this, chapter 14, verse 23, the purpose of tithing, here it is, is to teach you to give all your money to New Walk Church. See, there it is, right there. <laughs> that, I knew it. No, that's not what it says. Actually, it says the purpose is to teach you to all, it's a principle that teaches you to put God first in your life in all things. What I've discovered is people who are figuring this out in their life have also figured out how then to put God first in other areas as well. It's a training wheel mentality that says, man, I'm reminded when this income comes in that God provided, that God brought this to me, and now I'm putting him first in this area continually in my life. And again, you won't know what this brings into your life until you actually Try it. Tithing just simply means 10%. 10% of the first income comes to the things of the Lord. I remember this playing out in such a big way just a couple of months ago. We did our Greater Things journey. Perhaps some, many of you have been a part of that, so you know what I'm talking about when I talk about our Greater Things journey. It wrapped up in November, and, uh, and this Greater Things journey for us is all about where we're going as a church in the future and how we're working to double, actually, uh, our ability to reach people for the kingdom of God here in this community. That's a big part of what we're trying to accomplish. And we kind of talked about it, we talked about it, and then people began to pledge. More pledges have come in, which is great. And now people are, are actually fulfilling their pledges, which is a blessing. By the way, if you pledge to greater things, it would help us if you also um, fulfill those pledges. And so some of that's already coming in, and I thank you. And I want to thank all of you that were a part of the greater things journey that we began and and we're off and running on now here at our church. Some of you were here for that, and you didn't give to it at all. And if I was to ask you privately why that is, your answer would be, I just can't. Now, you would like to. Nobody looks at the things of the kingdom of God and goes, that's stupid. I don't want to be a part of anything like that. No, everybody goes, Man, I want to see God advanced in our community. That's a great cause. We want to be a part of it, but because we've lived 
so opposite of God's design for our life, putting him first financially, getting out of debt, having a savings, having money for the kingdom of God when those opportunities come. Because we've ignored his plan in the scriptures and done it our own way, these moments come and we go, I, I just can't. And so now you have an opportunity in 2020 to say, hey, you know what, I probably ought to get this figured out going forward because I've been trying it so many other ways in my life. By the way, some of you, I'm talking about greater things and you have no idea what I'm talking about because you're new to our church. Uh, maybe in the last few weeks you started coming here. Uh, others of you are um, maybe from north, you come down for the, the winter and, and you just got here in the last few weeks. I'd love to tell you all about greater things. You can come meet me uh, next week in the cafe area there, visit, spend some time together there, and I'm going to explain to you exactly what greater things is and where our church is headed. And so you're welcome to join me there a week from today in the cafe right next door. I'll be walking through our greater things journey, and I'd love to have you be a part of that. Getting this, it's God really first in your finances. Here's the next thing in your notes. The letter I is interests. You've got interests. You've got hobbies. You've got activities you love to do. You've got sports, maybe. I don't know what it is, but you all, everybody in this room has activities. God wants us to enjoy some of these things that he's given for us here in life. It's when those things have taken the priority over God. When your interests have taken a, a primary seat and God, through your interests, gets pushed further and further back. And I know a lot about what interests you the most by the things you think about the most or the things that you talk about the most or the things that you read about the most or the things that get you the most excited in life. Like I know, I, I've been to sporting events where I've been there with guys who, who are part of the church and, and, and they'll be there, they'll be at the sporting event and they'll be going batty crazy for their team. And then they come to church and they'll be like, stiff as a board. I, I, I know what interests you most by the things you get excited about the most. And the things that you get excited about are not the things of God. I, I know people who, who they spend their time, they, uh, they spend a lot of energy and time on, the, on their phone. And, and it's constant and it's chitty, chatty, posty, posty, posty everywhere, every, constantly, constantly, constantly. And you got all, by a multiplier effect, a lot of time on your phone, but not a lot of time with God. I know what interests you more in that setting, and it's not the things of God. I know people who will love to talk about the weather, they'll love to talk about uh, politics, or they love to gossip about people, and you can't get them to speak for three minutes a week about the Lord. You just can't. They're not talking about it. I know people who come here to this church, and they Oh, they enter into the doors. They, they pick apart things, and they love to talk about all the things that aren't right and things that are wrong, things that ought to change, all the things that ought to be different. They don't spend time talking about how the message applies to their life. They don't get in the car and go, man, that needs to change in my life. They just, I know what interests you most. It's, it's these other things and not actually the real reason why you ought to be here at the church. Our interests and the things that we like to do most we shove God down into this sort of second, third, fourth place position in our life. What are you interested in? You, look, you can play sports and glorify God. You can do your hobbies and glorify God. You can have a career that you love and glorify God in your career. You can do that. That is how it actually is supposed to happen. Making sure that in all things that we're doing in all our interests, we are glorifying God. In 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it says, hey, by the way, you can glorify God before you eat. Amen. It says this, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. I know you're salivating and the food's coming and you say, but before I do that, God, thank you. You brought this here. You, you provided this. We have another meal, God. I thank you for this. In all things, you can glorify God. God, but sadly, we've got so many interests, and God gets pushed further and further away. Here's the next letter, the letter R. And this one is something I talk about several times a year, and it's relationships. Is God first in my relationships? Is God first in 
I'm dating somebody. Is God first in that relationships and our sexual purity? Is God first? Uh, I, 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 I've got friends. I've got these buddies of mine. It, it, the people that I'm rolling with is God first. We say here at our church, right people, right place, right time. But you want to make sure that you've got right people around you in your life. And I guess I'll stop talking about how important this is one day when we all stop hanging around stupid people that are impacting our life in a negative way. Some of you right now, okay, first of all, let's just do this. By a show of hands, this is an easy one for all of us. How many of us know deep down inside that there can be some unhealthiness potentially in our life if we hang out with unhealthy or toxic people? How many of you know that's possible? Yeah. Okay, all of us know that. And some of you are right now. And you're playing with fire. And you want to advance spiritually, but you're hanging around some people who are going to take you into the wrong place. Proverbs 12, 26 says, The righteous man has caution in friendships pays attention to the people he's hanging around. Bad company corrupts good character. God's got to be first in our relationships. We've got to make sure that we're prioritizing this, this right and these external relationships, friendships. Are you really serious about this? Because if you are, you'll evaluate this area of your life. It doesn't mean we, we stop loving people who need Jesus, but again, the reminder is the people that are closest to us, are they seeking God first? And it's not just in those external friends' relationships as well. It's in our home life. In other words, it's important that in our home life, God is being put first. They're just in that place. I remember when I first came to know Jesus Christ, I remember reading a passage of Scripture in Joshua and it said this, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I remember thinking, my goodness, you know what? I want that to be a story about my home. Now, I, I had not been married too long, and we were starting to have some kids. And I remember thinking, I'd come to know Christ, and I'm like, that's what I want my home. I want my home to be about, hey, as for me and my house, we serve the Lord. You can ask my girls. They're, they're just about grown up, you know, at this point, And they would tell you that that is what our home, what we serve the Lord. We have served the Lord in our home. But that didn't happen by accident. It came with, well, in this case, the man leading in the home, saying this is what our home is going to be about. We are going to serve God in this home. It, it was for our whole family, but it really started with my marriage. Like, I, I wanted to make sure that, hey, as a husband, God first, and for my wife. God first. Like that was going to be, a, and then our marriage would flow better, and then thus the family. In marriage, when you have a husband that's serving the Lord, and that's a first priority, and the wife has God as first priority in their life, things are dramatically different. I mean, I could just, it doesn't mean it's perfect. That's not what I said. But there are things in a marriage that can cause chaos, crisis, arguments, things can get derailed. But when you're both putting God first. You work through these struggles. You get better together. But let me just make it as plain as day. This is how easy this is to understand. Ready? As a husband, I have God first. Jesus is Lord of my life for my wife. Jesus is Lord of her life. And when those things are at the top of the marriage, check this out. Jesus ain't going to do battle with Jesus. Amen. He just doesn't. So this natural flow is now, hey, we are connecting, we are working together as a couple. Let's go back and talk about our external relationships. This is why we do groups. We want to introduce you to opportunities and settings by which you can connect with people who want to flow this decade with you and beyond, this year and beyond, to, to better things for their life. And when you get into our group settings and, and you stay faithful to our groups, you connect with a different group of people that want to that wanna journey with you together. I said last week, I want to journey with people. Our groups kicked off actually yesterday. And this coming week, they're all kicking off the first, the, the first week of our new round of groups. And I think coming into the weekend, we had about 25 out of the 60-something groups are booked. They're completely full. But that means we still have 30, 35 groups that still have openings. And you have an opportunity. to step. It's a step of faith, if you've never done it, to say, I want to be in a group. 
and I'm going to make time and priority to make sure that I am getting connected with another group of people that are moving in the same direction. What are our groups? They're groups that meet in people's homes in different settings. They do studies for 8, 10, 12 weeks together, and we connect, and we grow together in our spiritual life. We do life together as well, and if you haven't signed up, get signed up. If you're interested, uh, there's, there's on the round little table outside these doors, there's brochures that list all of our groups, dates, times, topics, or maybe you want to go to our connect table on the way out on the left-hand side of the hallway and just register. And we've got groups to deal with getting your money in order, and we've got groups that are men's groups, and we have women's groups, and we've got uh, groups that deal with addictions and recovery and all kinds of opportunities. You've just got to decide to get plugged in. Are you going to make God first in relationships? Here's the next one, the letter S, and that's schedule. In your schedule, do you have time for God? Are you making unique opportunities set aside time for God in your schedule, in your daily schedule? I found a verse this week that for some of you, I found your life verse, so you want to see it. I know you want to see your life verse, so I'm going to show it to you. I found it this week, and it's in Exodus chapter 18 and verse 13, and here's what it says. He was kept busy, talking about Moses, from morning to night. That's, so, that's a lot of you. That's your life verse right there. You are kept busy from morning to night. You got a lot going on. I know, like, you're probably the busiest person in the world. I know. You are, like, amazing. You're so busy with all the things you got going on. Total chaos, all the time you got things to do, people to see, bills to pay, jobs to go to, deal with the kids, all the things you got going on. You are super busy and so busy that you don't have time for the things that are most important. I love what it says in Jeremiah chapter 2. It talks about, you know, what, what happens day after day. It says this, my people have forgotten faith for days on end. And that's easy to do. I know that's easy to do that we could get things so piled up in our life and the next day more piled up and more piled up that days begin to go by where we forget about our faith. And we forget. And, and so how do we practically, like what do we do to keep from forgetting? I, I'm going to share that with you. I'm going to give you an opportunity to, to kind of understand how this works. But let me just say this because right about now there's somebody who's thinking this. Hey, uh, Pastor Gary, I don't have a problem with this because I am faithful. I come to church every week, either Saturday or Sunday. Pastor, I am faithful here. Thank you for that. I think that's really nice. But let me put it in a different way of thinking so you can understand this. If I, if I told my wife, hey, babe, listen, I'm only going to be faithful to you one day a week. <laughs> this might not go over well, you could imagine. Now, tomorrow, 50% faithfulness, maybe only a quarter percent, faith, or 25% faithful next week, or next, uh, the next day, maybe Wednesday, not at all. I'll come back to you, though, on the weekend. If I told you that, you'd say, that don't, that ain't going, if I tell her that, she's going to say, that's not going to fly. What do you, how do you think God feels about that? Oh, just one day a week. I'm talking about seven days a week, finding opportunities, connecting Connecting with God. So how do we do this in a very practical way? It's simple. You, you schedule it. You, you're intentional. You, you schedule it. You would think in the culture we live in today that this would be so easy because we got devices with calendars that you can do alerts and reminders on and you just plug it in, right? And boop, it just, or bing, there it goes, alerts you, done. You would think it'd be so easy. And by the way, the Bibles are all on our phones now. They'll actually just read it to you. It just reads it. You set it right there and it just reads the Bible to you. In whatever translation you want, it just reads it to you. You would think that we would now more than ever have all kinds of time to just set aside, reminders to set aside time for God, and yet it's getting less and less. Busier and busier from morning to night, day after day, chaos in our schedule. David said this in Psalm 55 verse 17. I will pray morning, noon, and night, and he will hear, here's the promise, he will hear and answer me. David got out his iPhone, and he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to schedule morning, noon, you know when coffee break comes? I'm going to schedule a few minutes to pray and read a couple scriptures. 
Lunch break comes. You know what? I'm going to schedule a couple of minutes. I'm, I'm going to pray and read some scriptures. And evening comes and just set a little time aside. To just pray and read some scriptures. He, he's talking about, that's what's happening here. He's talking about how there are times of the day that he's being very specific really throughout the day. But times, he's like, I'm reminded that I need to connect with God multiple times a day. I am challenging you this year to say, God, in my schedule, I'm going to make sure these firsts are there in my schedule. In Mark 1.35, Jesus modeled this for us. Here, here's, what it, here's what he said in Mark 1.35. He said this, or that said this about Jesus. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and he went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Okay, I say this. I, if Jesus needed to do it, I probably do. I probably need to have time set aside for God in my schedule. If I decided to just eat food one day a week and not eat anything else the other six days, that, I would be very unhealthy living like that. I just would. That, your body's not made for that. That's what people are doing at church. They come one day a week and spiritually eat, and then they eat nothing. And some of you have spiritual indigestion because you're not eating healthy. You're not eating regularly spiritually in your life. And you weren't meant for that. Uh, something that we do here at our church that kind of teaches people uh, how to uh, get these disciplines and, and, and grow and encounter these blessings and promises in their life is something we do here at our church. It's called New Steps. And at New Steps, what we do is we kind of talk about the fundamentals of the faith, but we, we give you these opportunities to learn how to put these disciplines into action. So we have New Steps 101, 201, 301 and 401, and we kind of guide you through this journey of going through these together. It's, it's discipleship. It, it's, a, it's a fundamental sort of discipleship opportunity, and I'm putting it before you as you seek to do things different in 2020. You've never come to New Steps, ever. Maybe you're just hearing about it for the first time. In two weeks, at 2 p.m., right next door in the hospitality room, we're going to gather and start 101. You don't have to sign up. You just show up. We'll have room for you. Show up, we'll, we'll help you kind of get this ball rolling and then guide you through this journey of going through. Uh, it takes, you know, a year, year and a half as people are going through this. Every quarter we do it and you begin to take your next steps along the way. Don't need to sign up, just show up in two weeks. Here's the next thing in your notes, the letter T. Stands for troubles. I'm going to put God first when troubles come in my life. Now, you, if you lived in the world long enough, you know that it's not a matter of if, but troubles are coming your way in 2020. I don't know what they are. Some of you know some things that might be headed your way in 2020, uh, but there are a lot of unknowns that will be made known to us at some point in 2020. There's something going to happen, and not just in 2020 and beyond. Crisis, a phone call, something difficult happens, and, and it comes our way. And the question then becomes... Where do you turn in that moment of crisis? And I talk to way too many people who are going through life, and when crisis comes, they come to me because they've tried all these other things and it hasn't helped them. And then they finally go, hmm, maybe I should turn to God. It ought not happen like that. I hear people, they'll say things like that. Like, well, we've tried everything else. I guess all we can do now is pray. What the, what? All you can, that's the first thing you do, not the last thing you do. But it's not first in your life. When troubles come, you, maybe you seek substances. Maybe you seek things of this world to calm you down. Maybe you go for possessions to make yourself feel better. But you don't turn to God in those very difficult times in your life. This year when they come, my challenge is the first thing. First thing, God, I am turning, I am turning to you in this very difficult time. No other, there are no other gods before me in a time of trouble. God, you're first. Here's what it says in Psalm 50 and verse 15. God says, call upon me in your day of trouble. Here's the promise. Seek me first. And here's what it says. I will deliver you and you will honor me. This is really beautiful. This is not saying Seek me and you won't have problems. It's saying the opposite, actually. It's saying you will have problems, but I will take you through them. So the question as a believer is, oh, not, you, I said this before, you, you will have struggles, 
It's who is, what is guiding you through to the other side of those problems. And that is what I want you to hear today as an important first in 2020. I've seen people try this both ways. I've seen people go through very tragic situations and seek God through them and make it to the other side. I've seen others try everything else and not seek God. And I wonder sometimes to myself, how does that even work out? Like, how could you ever go through tragedy in life without taking the hand of the Heavenly Father? Uh, let me check that. I know how it works out. I've seen it. And let me tell you how it works out. It's people that are stuck in bitterness, people that are stuck in brokenness, people that turn to substances, people that, uh, uh, that try to repress and, and suppress things by, through their addictions, and, and they never get out of the, the funk or the quagmire that they're in. And God says, it doesn't have to be like that. You're going to have difficulties, but I'm leading you to the other side. Call upon me, and I will deliver. And by the way, you will... You will praise me. You will honor me because I brought you through something difficult, God says. And then here's the last thing, the letter S first. And I just wrote Sabbath. You know, the weekend comes. Uh, the Bible tells us, hey, you take a time of refresher in your life. And the Sabbath is all about resting. It's all about refreshing. It's all about renewal. And I've had uh, a lot of... Uh, time to learn how important this is in my life. And, and for me, what I've learned that as a part of the Sabbath, and this is the part that I really want to talk about, part of my refreshment of the Sabbath is connecting with God and being around, especially here on the weekends, I get to be around other believers. Uh, technically, I, I spend a lot of my Sabbath on, on Monday, but I still value the connectivity of the local church on the weekend as a part of that whole thing that I'm doing to refresh and for you all, though, especially as I'm talking to you as the preacher to people listening, listening to me, you have the opportunity to come into God's house and refresh and kind of get things recalibrated as you go into a new week. And it's so valuable to have that. I remember in 2019, I was talking to people about, hey, take God's house seriously. Put it first in your life. I'm talking about being here on the weekends, getting the, the word spoken to you, getting action plans, getting reconnected, getting a recalibration all of that matters. And I talked in 2019 and challenged people and said, take that seriously. And I watched people last year in 2019 dig into the local church. They dug roots into the local church and they said, man, I'm going to be planted here. I'm going to connect here. They started getting on serve teams for the first time. They started getting in groups for the first time. They started taking God's house seriously as a place to be at. And I watched those people and, and as they went through things throughout the year, they had people around them that that rallied and, and got to their side. And as they had high points in their life, they were able to rally around others that were struggling. And, and as culture was shoving things down their throat and saying, this is what we really think about your faith. You got here on the weekends and you connected in God's house and you, you flourished with other people around you and you got recalibrated to do battle against the things that culture is sending your way. And you need that on the weekends. You need that encouragement. You need that connectivity. And so my challenge to you is on the weekends, put God's house first. Be here. Don't treat weekend worship like, well, if I ain't got anything better to do, I'll go to church. It's the other way around. This is the best thing to do. This is the best thing to be a part of. This is the thing that keeps you moving and keeps you going and feeds you and sets the week out in a right positioning so that you can connect with them in healthy ways throughout the week as well. Don't miss the value of the weekends. Let me give you the promise in the scripture. Putting God first in his house, here it is. Those who are planted in the what? In the house of the Lord shall. Now let me stop right there. It doesn't say those who are planted at their lake house. It doesn't say those who are planted in their bank account. It doesn't say those who are planted in their career. It doesn't say those who are planted in all their little activities. It says those who are planted in the house. Here's the promise. Shall, that's a promise. Still bear fruit in old age they shall be fresh and flourishing. That in the days of my life, 
as I'm breathing air in my lungs, even in my old age, as I grow older, I'm planted. And so there's a refreshing that still takes place in my life because I'm connected to his house. I can still bear fruit in the kingdom of God. I can still connect with other believers in a healthy way because I have taken time to plant myself in the house of the Lord. And I want to challenge you to do that in 2020. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? God, this year we have a lot of things presented, a lot of things, opportunities that we could do, things that we could go do, but God, we're reminded of the first today. I want to speak to believers across the room. You, you say you're a believer and you say you put God first and maybe God is pressing into you, challenging you about some of these areas I talked about here today. God, may you have your way with those who need to recalibrate, put God first in some of these very specific areas of their life, these biggies here, God, that matter so much. God, I'm also praying uh, right now that in, because I know watching online and right here in an audience this size, there are people who have tried little g-gods and they've tried for a long time to let little g-gods be their master and they have found out that those little g-gods do not have their best interest at heart. And so this morning, if that is you, you've never said, God, I'm going to put you first place in my life. You can do that today. And I know you're probably like me when I first came to know Christ, you began to think, man, you know what? I really got it wrong. What do I do with all these mistakes and the sin and the failure of my past? That's why Jesus came. So that you could be forgiven for having chosen the idols and the wrong gods. And you could start following God now and having a relationship with him. Jesus Christ hung on that cross, died on the cross, rose from the dead for your forgiveness. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you could say today, God, I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of your one and only son, Jesus Christ. God, I want your spirit to begin to empower me in my life. And so today I begin that journey with you, God. Forgive me of the times that I chose wrongly. God, set me on a new path in my life. I believe you have my best interests at heart from this side of eternity and all the way to the other side. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. If you made that decision this morning, we say congratulations to you. <laughs> Pastor Eddie's going to join you. He's going to close out service and tell you all about things you need to know about the chili. Go ahead, Pastor Eddie. Thank you, Pastor Gary. Good morning, New Walk. And we just heard any area of your life you want God to bless, we need to get to work. Put God first. Piece of cake, right? Now it's going to take a little bit of work. So take those notes that you just wrote down. Fold them up. Put them in your pocket or put them in your purse. Take them with you. Look at them again this week. Let God continue to speak to your heart through, through those verses, through what Pastor Gary talked to us about this morning. Some good stuff there to start off our year. Now our ushers are getting ready to pass the buckets to receive our tithes and offerings. One of the ways that we allow for people to, to, to give back a little portion of what, what God has given us. So get ready for that. But also it's a place where we like to put our connect cards. Now this is, we love everyone to drop this card in that bucket when it goes by, and this is a great place where you could tell us maybe something you want us to know about or something you want us to pray for, something that's going on in your life. So go ahead and take advantage of that connect card when it goes by, unless you're a first or second time visitor, our VIPs. We're so glad you're here. And instead of putting that card in the bucket when it goes by, take that out, out the doors. We have two different areas you can take that to this morning, one out the, to the left and one out to the right where if you give that to them, we have a VIP team that's wel ready to welcome you. We have a gift just for being a first or second time visitor, so don't miss out on that opportunity. So as the ushers are about to come, let's uh, go to our Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for all that you're doing in this church, all that you're doing in our lives. Lord, I believe you've spoken this morning. You've spoken to our hearts, our lives, areas that that are not surrendered to you, areas that um, maybe you're speaking in. I pray that you would continue to speak in the days and the weeks to come. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you for all that you're doing here and in our community. I ask that you would continue that, Father. And I pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Well, we've had some exciting weeks here lately as a church. We had our Christmas services just a few weeks ago. Those were awesome. We had some baptism services that followed the week after. We got to see some amazing things happen. Last weekend, we had the Epic Family Weekend. Well, we've got something exciting happening this weekend as well, and it's something that we need your help on. Now, we take two trips a year. We take a, a guy's trip that goes to Wild at Heart and a lady's trip that's called Captivated, and they're having a competition. There's a shot outside right now 
We have a chili cook-off, and the guys are competing against the girls for a little extra help on their trip. And here's where we need your help. When we leave here, instead of heading home, head out the doors. If you have kids in, in the kids' area, make sure you go get them first. And then you head out the doors when you walk out to the left, and there's a red table. At that table, you're going to get a spoon just like this. It's a very important spoon. I'll tell you why here in just a second. But you're going to go around and, and taste all sorts of different kinds of chili. And there are some great ones out there, all different kinds and flavors. We need you to vote. So you go around. You're going to get different cups of chili at different places. Taste all that you'd like. And when you're done, pick your favorite one and take that spoon back. And you're going to drop it back at that table. They have a place to collect them. And that's your vote for your favorite chili. So we need your help on that. Go ahead and do it. Now, if you're really hungry and you'd like to purchase a bowl of chili, we have for a dollar you could buy a bowl of chili or a dollar you could buy a bottle of water. That money's going to go towards those trips, so it's going to a great cause. If you're extra hungry and those little cups don't fill you up, make sure you pick up on that as well. Now, one last thing I wanted to tell you about is that at the end of the service, before you head out there, if there's something on your heart, maybe God's been speaking to you this morning, or there's something that you just want to pray with someone about, maybe this morning you accepted Jesus as your Savior. If that's you, at the end of the service, instead of heading out the back doors, if you want to make your way to the front, we have a team of people right here at the front of the stage called our prayer team. They would love to meet you, with you. They would love to talk with you. Anything that's on your heart you'd like to share, that team is just here for you, so don't miss out on that opportunity right at the end of the service. New Walk, that is all I have for you this morning. You guys ready for some chili? All right, head out the doors. We'll see you here next week.